Good morning everybody and welcome. I am Mel Sol, Director of Instruction and Master Professional at the Mel Sol Golf School headquartered in Pauley's Island, South Carolina. I also have locations at Sunset Beach, North Carolina and Ellicottville, New York. You can check my website at ritson soulcom for all rates and schedules. Today we're going to talk about chipping and the majority of the people that I teach when I teach this chipping method they've never heard it before and if you watch the tour nearly all the PGA Tour players chip like this so it's nothing new but most amateurs tend to chip with a lob wedge or a sand wedge and it's very difficult so I have three formulas so if I chip with my pitching wedge the ball will fly in the air about half the distance and roll about half the distance if I chip with an eight iron the ball will fly about one third and roll two thirds and if I chip with a six iron the ball will fly one quarter and roll three quarters that's for a normal paste level green so here oh the golden rule in all of this is fly the ball in the air as little as possible. So here the green's really close to me, so I don't want to fly it halfway. So I wouldn't use a pitching wedge. I wouldn't even use an eight iron. I would use a six iron to land it here. So I'm going to land it one quarter of the distance, which is going to be about here. I can also see the green slopes a little bit, so I'm going to go a little bit to the right. I'm going downhill. So now I'm going to go down one club. So instead of a six iron, I'm going to go to a seven iron because a six iron downhill, it would roll beyond the hole. Set up, I'm going to do it this way for a second. If you put your two feet together with the ball in the middle and then turn, keep the heels still and turn both toes, that's going to put the ball just behind the toes of the back foot. In one of my earlier tips, I said, butter the club always over your left thigh. So that's your chipping posture and stance. And that way I'm always going to hit the ball first. Very slight descending blow as I hit it, which is going to help it get airborne. When I'm doing my practice swing, the principle I use is the same principle as a basketball player shooting hoops. The basketball player is going to look at the rim and shoot. If it's too hard, next one's softer. If it's too soft, next one's harder. I want you to maybe take a tee or a coin or a marker, put it on the green where you think you want to land the ball. On the golf course, what I do is I pace it off. I'll walk to the flag and I'll walk three quarters of the distance. So sometimes it might be here, sometimes it might be here, but I want to find the exact spot before I chip. So I've already done that, so I know that my landing spot's going to be over there. So now I'm going to go slightly to the right. So I, when I do my practice swing, I'm looking at where I want to land the ball. And I'm focusing my eyes on that spot all the time. I'm not letting my head go back and forth. I'm looking at the landing spot and doing my practice swing. And my subconscious is saying, this is about how hard I'm going to hit it. So once I have that feel, now I can go to the ball. And that ball is going to finish right next to the hole. So this is what I call the brush brush. When I'm looking at my landing spot, I'm letting the club just brush, 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 brush as I go through. When I go to the ball, I just brush the ball off the top. That's going to let the ball roll. That ball is going to stop. If it doesn't go in, it's going to stop right next to the hole. So for me, on this particular shot, the 7-iron is the right club. Here's three reasons why this system is better than any other. Number one, using a 7-iron instead of a lob wedge, my backswing is much smaller. The smaller the swing, the less chance I've got of making an error. Number two, the roll. When I'm tripping with a fairly straight face club, the roll is much more predictable. I'm not going to get backspin off a 7-iron. I am going to get back to it if I'm using a lob wedge or a sandwich. So if I nip it just right, hits the green and checks and comes up short, 
Next hole, I think, well, I've got to hit it harder, I hit it harder, I don't get the check, and it rolls on by. No backspin, the roll is going to be very predictable. And then the last reason is a very, very good reason, and that is that the miss hits will even finish closer. So if I'm doing a small swing over here like this, and then I get up and I blade it on top, it's not going to finish next to the hole, but it's going to trundle down there, I'm going to have maybe 10 feet. If I've got a sandwich or a lob wedge and I've got a bigger swing when I hit it, the ball's going to go screaming over the green. So three reasons why the system works. I have on one of my earlier posts the formulas. If you need them again, re-watch this video, write them down. Pitching wedge half and half. So if I was going, say, to this hole over here, if I was going this hole here, halfway would be about here. So I would take one less than my pitching wedge, which would be my gap wedge, take my gap wedge, land it here, would stop there. If I'm going to this next hole, which is over here, if I land it here, it's going to be about a third of the way, which would normally be an eight iron, but because I'm going downhill, I'll take the nine. So if I take the nine and chip it, it'll stop over there. So. Remember the golden rule, fly the ball in the air as little as possible and let it roll as much as possible. Try this system, it will take strokes off your game. Thanks for watching.